Greetings, nerds. This is Dana Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing much better. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly have had a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we came back from our summer hiatus, Sarah shared her COVID story, and then I, I, I um, got had my my COVID experience uh, this past week. So that's why we're recording a little later this week. But uh, yeah, and the funny thing about it, I was going to go get my shot, <laughs> and then I test positive the day before. <laughs> the irony, the irony yeah. of it all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you were feeling better. Yep. Um, I did. We, I did see everything that went on this weekend about the Emmys. Yep. Um, yep. and congrats to all of the winners, specifically yep. Shogun, just took home everything. Yeah, um, it was like what, 18 awards total. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was like Most history Emmys. setting. Yeah. Yeah. Record. Yeah record setting sweep yep. and then the bear season two specifically picked up a lot of awards as well which yep. I was I not surprised by yeah i think they broke their own record yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i was not surprised by that yeah. it will be interesting to see um what happens next year with uh the season three i don't yeah. i don't expect but i also you know sometimes the award shows uh they 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 have different. <laughs> they perceive things differently. They and honestly, yeah. Like, I'm sorry. There's there's not a lot of competition going on either. So yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. I guess I haven't watched Hacks. I guess Hacks actually ended up winning Best Comedy instead of The Bear. But uh, but uh, yeah, I guess maybe that'll be the show that will uh, become the darling. Uh, for uh, for the uh, 2025 Emmys, uh, which will be, I guess, shows that aired between J- July, J- June 1 of 2024 and, I guess, May 31st of 2025. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did watch uh, The Perfect Couple. Have you heard about no. this show? I have not. It, it was for, for about a week, because I think it's only been on Netflix for about two weeks now, maybe three. Okay. Okay. But I, I kept hearing that people say things, and then I found out it was six episodes, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do say that. I don't understand. I, there is, there, I don't know if it's me or if people just hype me up, but I'm just, I'm watching this, and it's fine. I mean... Mm. Nicole Kidman doesn't sign on a project for nothing. So oh, she was that, oh, there. Okay. One. Yeah, yeah, it's that okay. one. Um, okay. Uh, Dakota Fanning, too, in there as well. Okay. Um, okay. Lev, Lev Sh- I for- Shiver? Love Shiver? Yeah. 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 Um, and there, it's, 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 it's fun. It's fine. It's a murder mystery. Like, who killed this person? night before a merit a wedding and then money and bribery all of that's involved um it just <laughs> it just i don't understand why people were were like so addicted to this i don't uh, get it to uh, me it's just yeah, an average average murder mystery show like You've seen it 20 times before. They didn't really do anything that spectacular. The characters are honestly not that interesting. Mm. Um, and there's not a lot of depth to them. Mm. Uh, so I just, um, but I finished it. And yeah, I just, I, it, I, and I mean, I don't know what it is, but I feel like people just, I, I get it in my head that this is supposed to be the next best thing. And, and it never is. Yeah. <laughs> never <laughs> is. <laughs> and it'll be interesting because this week we got to talk about next week, um, Agatha all along in the penguin. So I'm like, Oh God, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, 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 uh, seen some commentary on Agatha. I think, I think people are, I've seen some mixed, mixed, mostly positive, but I have some, I've seen some, some lukewarm 
response as well. Yeah. 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 I and, I try I'm trying not to pay attention to any of it, honestly, yeah. about yeah. either of the show. I saw a thumbnail about the penguin where I, which made me raise an eyebrow. So I'm not yeah. I'm not sure. And and the same with the Joker. Joker mm. 2 coming up in a few weeks as well. Like there's a lot of mixed things happening. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't need this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well just yeah. Same, same. I, I, yeah, I'm like, I'm kind of, you know, I know whenever I was sick, I, I think I texted you. I was just like, uh, or, and maybe I was like, I don't know if it's the illness speaking or if it's just me or if it's just where I am with with things in the genre right now. But I was like, are you excited about Agatha and the Penguin? And because uh, I think I said I was more excited for Penguin than Agatha, but yeah, but you've been yeah. saying that since I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Ever. So I guess. I, Okay, good. So it wasn't a COVID-induced. Uh, <laughs> no, no, <fault>. no. <laughs> yeah, you know, your brain, COVID brain, will make you do funny things. So, um. <laughs> well, well, the way you said it, that like yeah. it was the first time you had ever yeah. expressed that opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, like I said, know, I for, isn't yeah. that brand new information for anyone? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I for, yeah, like I said, COVID brain, you know, you forget stuff. I couldn't remember where I put my keys. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, but I will. But if you're listening to us, uh, we're recording on a Thursday, so the Penguin premieres actually tonight, and um, and then uh, and I think they'll re-air, you know, re-air again on Sunday. But then um, moving forward after the premiere this week, uh, it will air every Sunday night uh, at I think the nine o'clock time frame. So. So the premiere episode drops tonight, only to be re aired on Sunday. Only then to that become its regular schedule for the rest of the season. Yep. Yep. Correct. Okay. Yep. yep. <laughs> I don't like. Uh, oh, that 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 just reminds me about a grievance I have definitely aired on this podcast in the previous months. Um, yeah. Netflix's whole, let's drop half the season, have people wait two months only, or a month only to drop the next half. Okay, mm -hmm. Emily in Paris, the second half of the season dropped. Far superior than the first half. Mm -hmm. Even though, even though, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, people who have been watching Emily in Paris, I, I don't know what the actor who plays Gabrielle did, but he must have pissed off a writer because I have never not liked that character so much as in this <laughs> half of the season. Oh. And I am going to be so upset when she, Emily and Gabrielle end up together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be mad <laughs> because it's just so classic. Like mm. they finally get together only to be ripped apart, but it's also not like the understanding they they totally made him into a jackass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, man. And, and there's this other guy, and I'm like, oh, he's definitely a lot cooler. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just, I mean, I don't, mm. Emily and Paris should not have been split up in two parts. Mm. Uh, granted, I don't know if I would have been as high on this second half had I had to also, like, concurrently suffer through or not uh. concurrently but have watched the whole thing but I, yeah. I'm not sure I mean maybe it, well, maybe it will work it, you know maybe so, you know something as we, we mentioned this before sometimes it actually works in the show's favor to break them up whereas others it would have been just been better just to just drop them all at once yeah yeah I, I Emily in Paris I will die on this hill and say it's it can, it's a binge it's mm -hmm. like straight through no need does not it's not complicated what's going on in that show yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> nothing it's not intense okay yeah. Yeah. okay um supercell supercell is a little bit more intense yeah I I I don't I don't know why we only get six episodes um and I definitely think I would have enjoyed this season as a whole if we had not watched it like two episodes at a time. Mm -hmm. I don't I didn't need the break um, to break it up to um, because it's 
it's more intense. It's not that complicated of what's going on. Um, but I also just think that, and I understand why money, I mean, it's a new IP, all of that stuff. So, but it was just a really, <laughs> really short season only for it to like, just get started right when it ends. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. Yeah. The ending. Um, so I, you know, I actually, I'm actually glad we broke it up uh, because I don't, well, I know you said, I mean, yes, as far as the premise, it is pretty straightforward um, as far it, with the you know, genre storyline and everything. But for me, I, I like the fact that we broke it up because it gave me a chance to really breathe and, 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 and really get to get to know these characters. Cause you know, each episode was, you know, except for the final episode, you know, it was named after one of the principal five people who make up the, make up the team. And, and, and I think what, for, for me, what I really liked about this, about this season was, getting to know these characters, getting to know, yes, they, you know, obviously learn it going along with them on the journey as far as exploring their powers, but, but also getting, but for me, what really helped me like enjoy this series so much was just getting to know these characters as people. And so whenever we do get the finale of the season, you know, I, I I'm invested in them. So that whenever the events all play out as they as they do, I'm invested in in what happens to them. So to me, that that was what I, I really liked about this season and, and 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 breaking it up and going it two at a time. Right, right. Um, so that brings us to episode five, Rodney, when Spud ends up in the hospital, Rodney has a change of heart. Michael decides to tell Dion everything, but first he has to find the others. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we pick up right, um, right there at the, in, in crazy's, uh, drug lab, <laughs> uh, and all mayhem as soon as after, as soon as after Taser shoots the gun. Yeah. 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 Because all our all our heroes are all there together except for Michael because you know at the end of yeah because he's you know he got pulled away because his mom's had a, had an attack so it was a super uh, sickle cell attack so um so but you know we we get that whole the whole the whole thing sort of breaks down um and then um you know Andre steals the safe. Yep, Andre steals a safe. Everybody, you know, gets the, the sisters manage to get out, and um, and then Rodney goes, um, you know, goes to goes to the hospital visit Spud. Yep. And then only to leave, and then to go visit his mom. So we find out a little insight into his home life, which or lack thereof home life, um, yep. considering his uh, stepdad appears to be a racist. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where, and that really gets to my point about like getting to know these characters because we, 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 we saw, you know, he was a light skinned brother, and we already figured, you know, more likely than not, he was biracial. But you know, we do get confirmation of that, and then, and just the whole dynamic with his mother, and you know, and she, you know, he, he really is trying to reach out to her, and we learned that he, you know, left home at sixteen to go live in a hostel because of his stepfather and stuff, and. And um, you know, I wish we had learned. Did they? Did they ever? I don't think they. Did they mention anything about his sexual father or nope. if they were? Yeah, nope. yeah, yeah. Um, which I mean, clearly, you know, that's where obviously the sickle, where he got the sickle cell gene, um, you know, from his father. Um, but um, yeah, it was just you know, really, you know, Roddy was just at his wits' end because his best friend is like laid up, and you know, and she was. You know, he was trying to get a, you know, get a little lifeline, and she just, she just wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then he tries to get a lifeline from Michael, and Michael has other priorities. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanna, I wanna jump and um, talk about a something that caught me off guard, and mm. I found very unsettling, and. Yeah. 
re reflecting on it now, um, because I remember how I felt in the moment watching it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's it's the scene where Taser mm -hmm. um, and crew confront a girl who we met in the first episode, yeah. and they they piece together that she set them up for that it, that brawl that they had with the Sixers, and and everyone's just talking, and then out of nowhere, Taser just just beats the living shit out of her. Yeah. Um. I so so there's there's a few things that's going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I do over the years, especially as we watched this genre, there has been male and female superheroes and it's always like, oh, the girls can only fight the girls and all, and then the boys can only fight the boys. Um, in this scene though, the girl didn't even have powers. And so I don't know if that's why it even was more unsettling, but there's just something about that that nature and then there's another scene um between crazy and charlene mm -hmm. it doesn't go that far but it, it's like it's also a bit like okay i don't we don't need to linger here yeah. <laughs> don't don't need to linger um but this one in particular because i did feel like it went on a long time um i just i i don't I guess I have more questions than I do even reaction to it. I just, I want to understand why the writers chose to do that. Um, especially because for me as a viewer, I find it hard to forget a scene like that, especially yeah. involving a character who I know ultimately should be a hero. Like, okay, you got some redemption to do because that was messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah, I that one was hard that was a hard scene for me to watch too. Um and because I mean Taser has, has always been pretty almost irredeemable. <laughs> and then to to go and and just assault a woman like that. I mean, it was just a straight up assault. Um yeah. And it was, you know, I I know he's hurting. I know he is um, dealing with a lot with 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 what with, 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 with crazy, you know, with his grandmother being being assaulted by crazy and stuff. So I, you know, I don't know if he was trying to, if he, you know, because she's like part of crazy's gang, she's weaker. I mean, there was just a lot of subtext in that and really get into some issues of domestic violence, quite frankly, that, um, you know, maybe the imbal imbalance of power of. Well, maybe, but I, I, mean, I mean, is it domestic violence? Because they aren't together. Well, not the, no, but I mean, I guess more just the. No, not in a sense of a romantic relationship, but I do think, I mean, it, it, it was a power imbalance there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not only man and woman, but also suit versus just a normal person. Right. Um, and and so I don't know if the right, I don't know if Rap Band was trying to make a commentary about, like, there's multiple injustices going on here. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I was kind of, I was trying to figure out what was, with that and also with what was going on with Charlene and crazy. Um, yeah, Charlene and crazy. I actually, even though I didn't, I didn't want to watch it and I felt like it went on a bit too long. I also understood why they were doing that. Cause that was already suggested before. Yeah. I mean, to go back to your point, I never found taser to be irredeemable. Mm -hmm. Um, mainly because of his love for his grandma, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but there was he he never did anything that I felt like oh this is a really bad guy and then I watched that scene I'm like wait a second what's what what huh <laughs> I don't it it just is very confusing to me um and and I I just I felt like there should have been more context like like to 
part of the reason why it's unsettling is also just it, it totally goes out of comes out of nowhere. Like yeah, yeah. there was no nothing that led you to believe that that was going to happen. I mean, arguably the you you could go back to the first episode and how he um, he pulls out the gun and shoots and shoots Michael, right? Yeah, right. But but. And so maybe, but then again, you also know that Michael has powers or will have powers like you're, and maybe that's why it's still so, so I don't know. I mean, you could be right about the power and imbalance, the reasoning, but that like my takeaway from the show almost is I would just want to understand more about what led to that decision Mm -hmm. and it in a weird way it does make me curious to see how they fix that in the next season or how yeah. they make amends between the viewer and that or honestly i say this all the time will they even acknowledge that that happened because oh, yeah. writers are known to do something and it not go well with the viewers and suddenly like we're never going to talk about it again <laughs> I don't, you know, well, given given Crazy's boys, I mean, the, the, they were all like, dude. I mean, they, you know, I don't Is think they'll drop it. Boys? You mean Taser? Tasers. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, yeah. whenever, yeah, whenever Taser's boys were like, you know, whenever he, you know, whenever they, because even to you, being caught off guard, they were caught off guard. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that was very clear. They they and then they continued that while questioning what what are, why are we here staking out this old woman's house like yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what are we going to do here? So many questions and yeah. and and I I think overall Taser's not cut out for this position of power yeah. um in yeah. the gang life he he's he's made that abundantly clear over the past few episodes um with some of his decision making um but but yeah i i think uh, i mean un- unfortunately for this episode um it's rodney's episode but that scene caught me so off guard that i was definitely paying more attention to what was going on but with taser yeah. and um charlene than i was with rodney yeah and also so. with, yeah and to also to pick up with charlene and and with and you know and so with sabrina the juxtaposition of their situations in this episode because you know sabrina finally you know she's all she's been doing her best to like work hard do the right thing and then of course you know because of her learning her you know her powers and you know causing her to be distracted and of course you know her her, her and also her domestic her boyfriend cheating on her and her stuff and then you know whenever she did you know she had that performance review she was thinking she was coming you know getting yeah. there to get fired and then actually no they were actually going to promote her to head nurse because yeah, of how, I, yeah. I like that yeah um, I, I was I was glad that they inserted that scene and that it was all in her head about that yeah yeah, um, and that she she does she she needed to say something sooner about yeah. like I can't I can't work today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were, yeah. <laughs> I, I I have my own disease. I need to figure out for the day. I need to take a sick day, or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, and then meanwhile, Michael, he classic drama and tension happening where he's gonna tell Dion. Dion is chasing down um, more threads, um, especially involved with uh, Jasmine and Jasmine's mm-hmm. parents mm-hmm. are are giving her some breadcrumbs to follow about what's really going on. Um, and this all leads to Michael trying almost being able to tell her the truth only for Rodney to interrupt in. Yep. And they gotta go. So... Yeah. Very, very classic. Um, classic, yeah. It's like ah. <laughs> dramatic irony and tension building there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, you know, I, I liked, you know, but again, pulling all the threads together with Theon, um, you know, finding out more about what, what truly happened with Jasmine and, uh, you know, and her father. Um, was it this episode or this, the final episode where he called her? Um, um, I don't, I don't remember which yeah. one was, yeah. it was, and I want to say it's the second episode. Um, 
but but it could easily have been the first episode. Yeah. I mean, these yeah. these run all the episodes run together at a smooth pace, and that's why I argue that yeah, they that's... could easily binge together. Yeah, yeah, no, it was the second episode I think where because that's where they get they learn about the tower a town, but I think in this one I think they did I think they just wanted Michael to go in there and, and take you know use his powers to um, teleport her out. I think is what what they were at, what the ask was whenever um theon was was talking with him there but um i don't remember yeah. that at all yeah okay okay yeah that was that was the whenever that was the whenever as i said pulling the threads together uh in the thinking episode five and then episode six is where they um she learns about the uh no it wasn't this one it wasn't this one because that's right they um <laughs> Yeah, what yeah. are we doing here, Will? What no, no, we... I'm sorry. Well, again, they run together. I mean, they do run together. That's the that's the benefit and the, the detriment of like you know whenever whether you binge it and in the all six at once or or back to back. Yeah. So can we uh, move on to episode six. Um. <laughs> well, no, we, we haven't even talked about Andre and what happens with him before we you know we got to set that up to make what ha- what we what happens to him in episode six. Uh, um, I mean, basically, just the fact that I mean, I guess the quick thing is he got the safe. Learn said it's empty, and um, I guess he gets beat up. You know, I guess he wants to find out, wants to meet up with Michael and the rest of them. But on the way, the agent like runs into him, and uh, he gets beat up and mm-hmm. taken away in the portal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And the the in this episode, we get the seed planted that the more they use their pl- powers, the more energy gets depleted. Um, because Andre, for most of this episode, is just taking a nap. Yeah, taking a nap, which of course leads to his son. Um, yeah. Leads to his son further joining the gang crew um, as mm-hmm. well, much to his demise. So, right. so right. yeah, yeah, we get we get that scene. But you're right, we we see Andre get taken and um, Taser almost get taken, except Jasmine, Michael, and Rodney stop them. All right, yeah. um, episode six: Supercell, Taser, and Sabrina both search for Crazy Dion. W- follows up on information about the missing girl with powers pushed beyond their limit. The five must unite to save the ones they love. Um, yeah. So, so a lot of this episode is spent in Jasmine's house, mm-hmm. <laughs> or not Jasmine's house, uh, yeah, Sabrina's house. Sabrina's house. Yeah. Um. Which yeah. and and we just got Michael teleporting all over the place, just yep. teleporting. <laughs> away. Just teleported. Um, yeah. I do think that this was probably the best episode of the of the show. Um, mm-hmm. I I think it got stronger as it went on. It did. Um, and this is what we really wanted to see the whole time. We really wanted to see the five together. Uh, we wanted to understand more about the their nemesis and what was happening. Um, a lot of the the things we already, I mean, was very clear. Um, I always love that. <laughs> like it's pretty <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Everyone has a parent who has sickle cell. Yep. But no, no, no. We still have to allow the bad guy to explain this to us. <laughs> yeah. Um, which we do learn more about them. We get we get Ray, and at the end we get Victoria, who we had have met before. Um, but she's the real person behind the foundation. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah. so I I. Unless there is anything, I just really just want to jump down to the big fight because I mean it's actually no. There is one scene that I do have some some things I want to say about. But yeah. what were you yeah. gonna say? No, I, was, I, mean, I don't know. If, yeah, I didn't know if the one scene the, as before we get to the big fight. I mean, a couple, you know, just you know, we learned about what Jasmine's whole role in this whole operations been i guess she's you know she's the healer i mean she that's her you know her her super her ability has been to you know whenever um we we get these whenever the soup agents or whoever get beat up 
she's there to like you know, heal them heal them and um and of course we do get you know we do get the whole like andre getting re- recruited into the organization to because again they use his financial status and the fact that he wants you know to make have a great relationship with his son to you know you you know they've been keeping all these folks under surveillance and that's the other thing you know we, we get more details like you said about the, the surveilling and uh, how the powers actually get activated you know they may like either they may be active or they may be dormant but they get me you know by coming into interaction with another person who does have the super cell gene uh you know activates it so yeah uh, so we get you know so we definitely get a lot more context um and exposition about uh about the powers and and also about the organization as well Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um i wanted to talk about the scene between dion and michael where Mm -hmm. she finally learns the truth Mm -hmm. um the this is some of the best acting i've seen in the show arguably the best acted scene in the show um specifically from dion Mm-hmm. And it's not just the actress, um, it's also just the writing. Um, yeah. I, I said this when she first learned about the powers. Like, now learning about the death, you see her process it mm-hmm. in a very, what feels to be a very um, authentic way. Yeah. Um, and between the writing and the acting, I just thought that that was really stand out. I mean, overall... Um, a strong point is Dion as a character um, because they were able to make her not whiny mm-hmm. um, and not like just enough of a damsel in distress without being cringy about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Granted, granted, the longer the episode went on, it became more cringy, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did fall into some tricks, yeah. She Why became Knuckle Ben at all, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with you on that scene. I'm glad that, 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 that was going to be my other hot. That that was a highlight for me from the season as well. Um, and I did, and I, when I was, as I was watching that scene, I did think of you um, with, the, with, your, with the reaction in our conversation about it earlier, uh, because it did feel very authentic about what, if if someone told you, you know, that I've seen the day that you're going to die, you know, how would you react? Um, yeah. And, and, and I thought that was very, uh, yeah, as, as, as you eloquently put it, like, you know, it, it was very well done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now that the strings are all coming together on this, all this big thing, um, we all end up in a town one way or another, um, as Sabrina continues to find out what happened to Charlene um, mm-hmm. and Taser wants his vengeance. Um, I don't really know what Rodney wants. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, Rodney wants to like, uh, we're here, I'm doing this, and well, hopefully Michael will pay me back. <laughs> yeah, he just wants Michael to like set, you know, go back at set the yep. time right, and just go back in time, the, the time to t- that uh, Spud yeah. doesn't get hurt. But you know, yeah. but we all so, learn about these butterflies. So at what point, Will, hmm? were you like, where at what point watching this, these two episodes, were you thinking to yourself, crazy must have powers? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it actually, it, when it, whenever it was revealed, it made sense, but I, I never, it didn't really cross my mind, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll be honest, it, I didn't expect him to have powers, yeah. but I was starting, based on some of the scenes, um, especially the awkwardness after the Charlene scene, mm-hmm. like, I started to be like, okay, crazy must have some sort of tie, especially when it's pieced together. Like the more the location became obvious in what yeah. we've been seeing, it's like, okay. So yeah, yeah. does anybody else find it weird that crazy's like whole operations are right next door? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where I thought they were going to go. I thought that they would just like reveal like, you know, which we do, you know, just just that the fatty was a part of the organization that they were like a front to like, you know, again, to this bigger, grander, you know, world of and, and you know, not only you know, systemic true, you know, in the, in the real world systemic issues of racism and whatnot, but also in this this South London world that they've established too, where there's these issues. Uh, that's where I thought they were going to go. Mm-hmm. But him also being a, I guess, uh, what's the, it's like, was it Morph in uh, X-Men? <laughs> they take, no, no, he's Rogue. Yeah, he's Rogue, yeah, Rogue, excuse me, oh. yeah, 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 it takes on the person's powers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah temp- temporarily though, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And he can right. only hold one power at a time. I felt like yeah. during the that's action what it seemed sequence. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they did it. the the action in this final episode um, was good. Um, yeah. Good staging, good direction of choreography. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you don't you don't feel too disoriented. Um, mm-hmm. Where where people are coming from and, and everything, um, and Dion, you just feel d- disoriented on whether or not Dion's in the car or out of the car. Or where is Dion? Yeah, um, yeah. But but that's because a lot of this is kind of shown through uh, Michael's perspective, mm-hmm. um, and and <laughs> I don't know why this came to my mind during a certain sequence in this fight scene. I mean, I do know why, but I find it funny because I swear to you, I swear, I, I read the book, but I have only seen the movie one time. Um, but I'm just going to call it like Twilight Eclipse <laughs> or New, <laughs> new Moon. I think it's huh. New Moon Part Two. Huh. They do something very similar. <laughs> 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 where where we get we get the sequence where you think it all is lost and everyone's dead um and Michael just rewinds time and yeah. makes it right um only for it not not mm-hmm. to go his way um and and so so it's interesting cuz cuz we we've been told Dion has 3 months to live and mm-hmm. Three months has not passed. Nope. <laughs> she dead. She dead. So I guess to to question it, um, if you're a writer, yeah, do you try to undo that? I don't think you can. I mean, I think the rules that they've established in this show makes it. I mean, it's done. Yeah, but but see, it's it's weird because he, so so the rule is he can't bring anyone back to life, right? Right, right. But he did because he ran well, out of time. I think so because he so because whenever because the first whenever because crazy so Rodney like took the. Got the stuff, the, the device out of his, Crazy's back. Crazy switches around, slits his throat, mm-hmm. and then slits everyone else's throat. Yep, yep. Because it's his super speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But before, so but before Michael passed away, he did. He reversed it. So. I know. Yeah, but then they contradicted the next scene because then. That's yeah, because yeah, Dion dies. Yeah, what's with the paradox? Yeah, I yeah, mean, they created I, a paradox. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can only think like Dion is the the Ben of the show. Yeah, like, yeah. Like Peter yeah. Parker can't ever undo that. So. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said, Uncle. That's why I joked earlier, the Uncle Ben of it all, because yeah. I, I guess you, you know maybe that's that's where I did. I was like, I was hoping he would that Ratman wouldn't use the nexus event trope Mm -hmm. but but it looks like they did well i'm not bad at it either because i don't i think it's an an, i don't i i wasn't looking forward to season two still being about how does michael prevent dion from dying like yeah it needed to end it was surprising and I wasn't expecting it to end like that, but 
I I just wonder if season two will now be finding more information about Supercell to take yeah. them down while also trying to figure out a way to use my powers to unwrite history. Like, yeah, like because yeah. and then we've talked about this before about how fr- from the get go, once you realize what Michael's powers are, the tropes are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't our first Back to the Future movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they even they even joke about the butterfly effect in this yeah. show. So yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, but but that, I wonder too if because I mean Michael finally confronting his fear and telling her what the future. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that was the, you know, maybe that was the the thing that the small, you know, well, not a small thing, but maybe that was, that was the, that was the, he, maybe it wasn't meant for him to tell her what was, what was going on. So by him sharing that, it accelerated the timeline. Um, But to your point, you know, as far as moving ahead, as far as what the future seasons will hold, I mean, if. You know, because the other thing that they mentioned in the show, too, is, you know, he he does have li- his powers do have limits. Like, for example, he was only able to do that jump into the future once. He couldn't do it again. Right. So I, maybe maybe he used that one that one thing, bring everybody else back that one time. You know, he can't do it. For her again. Right. Right. I. I I almost feel like they were right when they were first talking about the butterfly effect in mm-hmm. that it's already happened because I didn't get the sense from future Michael that I didn't get the sense that um, in his timeline, he went to the future. Right. Like, I didn't get that sense like, oh, I've been expecting you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. That's a very good point. So yeah. I feel like it's almost as though, and then him telling Michael, "You need these five people," and that's that's what led to maybe an acceleration. Where in the original timeline, there was an extra three months before these people ha- were brought together, however they were, mm-hmm. and then, mm-hmm. but now between Michael knowing he has a timeline and inadvertently accelerates it like i think in a way what what both michaels have yet to realize is that it doesn't matter if you find them sooner or later like she's still like her destiny is still written like she will still die because it's gonna you're gonna have this this big event happen and she's gonna be a casualty Mm -hmm. um so so it so it it, it 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 definitely I can understand and I and I was kind of expecting this why after only six episodes and to finally have things like really kick in in this final episode why people were talking about it yeah um because it does pique your interest in like okay I want to I want to see where this goes what decisions the writers make and. Yeah. Where they take these characters mm-hmm. um, for for a few different reasons, and we've talked about them already. Yeah. Um. So, but but it's also it's also treading lightly just because we're we're in trope area. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is. <laughs> <laughs> tropes ahead. So yeah, we'll for see. sure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. I have. I really. Yeah. I think you 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 raised you 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 summed it up. Um why i think this 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 series ended uh this season in particular now that we know that we we are confirmed to have a season two why it ended so well and why i'm glad it did not get canceled because yeah there is a lot there um as we've discussed that um you know that that definitely makes me want to come back for a second season yeah yeah curious curious is a good thing to have when you're um ending a season of television um and especially when you're guaranteed to get some sort of answer with the season two i don't like (laughs) it when i'm like oh god 
I yeah. now that I'm curious about what what will happen, I hope they don't cancel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I know that's 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 my biggest hold. That's my biggest fear with a Netflix show is just like I don't want to get too invested because they're gonna you know it's a fifty fifty chance. <laughs> but I'm yeah. glad that our the, I'm glad that the odds were in super sales favor. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on X, formerly known at, as Twitter, at Seen the Nerd, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and threads, friend us, and visit our website, www.seenthenerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>